The Duke of Wellington never gets wet. I don't know, doing some sort of good. Dark brand. I can always find artwork. I wish I knew how to spray paint. It looks off. For the alleged, the lore, the thistle flower. Biggest socialite gathering in Glasgow is right here. Ladies on the cans. We are standing in front of right now what exists today as one of the longest historical things in Glasgow. The cathedral. Now, not this one. Back in the year 580, there was this dude who went by the name of Mundo. And for whatever reason, he was just like, hey, I like Scotland. I'm gonna go make a friend. And so what Mr. Mundo did was come up here and he made a friend with a really rich dude. Well, Mr. Mundo was super religious and he was like, hey, really rich friend, let's build me a church so I can do my church things. And so on this site, back in about 500, 600 AD, the first church was constructed. Now, year over year, especially as the Romans continued to send more religious people up here, this church expanded into what we see today. It's beautifully constructed. And Mr. Mundo is one of the reasons that there's such epic lore here. Let's go experience more and learn more about Glasgow because I have a feeling it's a very cool city, not just with Mr. Mundo, but I think there's more here. Let's go. Welcome to Glasgow. So we have this beautiful street. I think we should go down it because I see some art. So it's obviously been rainy um, and there's all sorts of you know, stop in the street. But this is just like, this is Glasgow side streets. Look at all this art though that we get. So we're entering some art. I'm gonna make sure I don't enter anyone's house. Sorry guys, the porch is up here though. So it looks like we have some practice art. Highlight you to this art here. Someone's understanding the drip. Here, you can see them again, trying to figure out the flow. What do we have down here? This is so cool. This is like all art. It's pretty awesome. Okay, check this out. It looks like this used to be an old liquor store. And then we have all sorts of really cool stuff. So this one looks like it's been painted over a couple of times. I kind of wish I knew the story behind all of these. Because you can tell it's being done by a couple of different people. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> Look at this. This message is no longer available. Okay, I'm, I'm very okay. <laughs> I'm very okay with this one. Um, yeah, hold on guys. Disclaimer, this video is going to have a bunch of rain in it and it drops on the camera because it's rainy. So I do my best to keep the camera clean, but yeah. Enjoy Glasgow. In front of us, we have what looks to be an old theater, but it's been redone with some very cool art. And I kind of like what the art is doing. This is a very cool theater. Oh, hi, do you want to be in the vlog? Okay. Come over here. Come over here. I'm over here, man. Over here. Nope. Pigeon doesn't want to be in the vlog. We'll find another exciting animal to put in the vlog today. So I like this one quite a lot. Um, let's go up to it and see it a little bit more. Oh man, it's very, very wet. It has some of the most iconic um, of glass going here. Okay, ah, even sunglasses are falling down. Okay, so <laughs> let's go see more in this awesome city. I mean, to be fair, I'm loving that there's no one on the streets. Like it's not even super early and just look at this. It's just me, an occasional car. And yeah, my equipment is wet, but you know, it'll dry, maybe. Tell. So one thing we'll find out is that the salmon is part of the Glasgow coat of arms. I don't really know why. Now we're walking right next to the River Clyde. And this is a large herbish bin. 
So, let's learn a little bit about the River Clyde. Well, Glasgow was founded mostly like for shipping and for industrial stuff. And as you probably guess, this is a huge pathway of where cars were invented. So, the River Clyde has been dug out many times to make it actually deeper so you can put more ships through it. And so you can get more industry and that sort of stuff. We're walking a beautiful footprint. So Glasgow, as I mentioned, built a lot around industry, especially shipping and textiles and engineering. Well, in the Industrial Revolution, in like the 17th and 18th century, Glasgow became even bigger. In fact, it was one of the cities to reach, ooh, that's windy, you probably can't hear me. Let's hide. Aha! Okay. Glasgow was one of the first cities in Europe to reach over a million people. It was huge. I mean, it still is today. So I think this is really important that I tell you another part of Glasgow's history. Because right now we're walking in one of the old warehouse districts. And one of the things about Glasgow is that it was some biggest manufacturing in Europe. I mean, look at this place. Right now, this place is like an auction house. Um, but you can just imagine that, you know, 50, 60 years ago, this place used to be making textiles or something for the shipping industry or something like that. So Glasgow, huge manufacturing um, until the end of World War II. And what happened at the end of World War II is that uh, there was, whoa, well, if you need a car part, I found one right there. In the World War II, globalization started to happen. There was more deals made with Japan and China and Pakistan and Vietnam. And manufacturing was moved from Europe to those places. Which put Glasgow out of work. On top of that, when Margaret Thatcher became prime minister, was ban a lot of the steel and that sort of type of industry and work. Which in turn, made a lot of cities in Scotland have to go find new work. Edinburgh recovered, Dundee recovered, Glasgow? Well, Glasgow's still working on recovering, and that's why we're here, to see how vibrant this city is and to see what they're up to. Ah. Check out this building wall. I don't know what all of this is, but it's very cool. Okay, so I reached this really cool park stuff. And I want to see if I can get in here. So check this out. So we have all of this stuff. It. We have all of this artwork. Oh, here looks like a trail. this amazing building and then this artwork goes on probably like for a hundred meters up there let's go look at some of it though so you can see like this building it used to be something you can see all these windows boarded up and stuff and then back here under and okay it's raining really a lot right now but these trees are providing mostly like natural cover okay now I'm stuck let's go Whoa. Walkie 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 I just had an amazing conversation with another person who's also enjoying this very empty weather. Look at this building here. So it's like half off. And in the very in the very top of the Man, there's probably some awesome artwork in that building. So there's some really big football games last night. Um, and like the police force really, really stepped up. Uh, oh man, look at this. Beautiful. And you know, likely it got a little bit crazy. I, of course, was sleeping because, you know, sleeping's good. And today, you know, it's almost noon. And this is how empty Glasgow is. This is, this is awesome. 
It's across the street. Oh. I didn't cross fast enough. I was looking at the building. I was getting very hopeful that the rain was going to pick up or stop. It's supposed to stop at some point this morning, today, whenever this is. So I was walking by and like behind all of these thingies, I decided to go take a look. So I'm walking this for the second time. And look what we have here. We have a little statue that's hiding. Blockade runners to Spain. I had a ship, the captain said, a ship that sailed for Spain. And when I get another ship, I'll sell her once again. How cool. So clearly there's some war in the world. I have the worm eggs. I love this. I love worm eggs. So this is the railroad track. Um, and now we're going to go to one of the places in Glasgow. Oh, it's raining really hard. Maybe we'll take a break under this bridge. We will see. We are going to one of the places in Glasgow where it's legal to do graffiti. So I'm expecting to see all sorts of graffiti, like professionals, new people, people trying new techniques. And then we're rocking, whoa, whoa, English. We are walking right now next to the River Clyde. And you can see kind of how, how tall the river moves whenever they need to raise the river or lower the river. So let's jump cut to the art. Okay, so one thing I'm seeing already so far in Glasgow art is that they're really into these crisp corners. Like I see a lot of people practicing them and then it looks like more of the, uh, I guess the more senior, the tenured artists are doing them. Ooh, I see another big mural. We're gonna have to go take a detour of this graffiti wall, I think, to see a mural. Okay, so here's what I saw. So this is a different style. Um, and I can't tell if like the owner of this building came through and tried to paint it and then someone else washed it over and so trying a new style, but I appreciate it, it's pretty cool. Um, there's this other thing here, it looks like a new, I don't know, some sort of an end of a protest or something, but then this is what we're after. Oh, water. Look at that. I like, you know, for Adam for me, zoom in. So he's picking a flower at the very top of the building from that water puddle so I can get a better view. That's very cool. <laughs> okay, so I wasn't going to record this because like the whole video is just going to be me looking at graffiti, which is also cool. I mean, there's videos uh, on YouTube of like people looking at fancy artwork. So I was appreciating this one, this piece of artwork. And like, we got a smiley face here and we have some more letters up here that say like, I don't know, something. And we have this thing here that says something. But then we have a tiny little message here. And this is what I'm laughing at. I wish I knew how to spray paint. It looks awesome. <laughs> yes, don't we all, don't we all. Man, this is so cool. If it weren't uh, rainy, there'd probably be artists out today. I mean, just look at this face. It's probably a combination of um, spray and brushwork. I don't know what this Rada must be an artist because I see a lot of their work in places. The Rada on the hearts up here. So I wonder if there's some sort of like a, I don't know, something in the art. Cause like you have some people who are painting on the bigger walls and then you have stuff like this on the smaller walls that isn't as thought out. And then just right across from it. Oh, we have the new Glasgow style. Here we go. Pointy. Pointy, I like it. Ooh, maybe someone from Bristol's been up here. I don't know why they've blocked this off. This is weird. Um, so in Bristol, we saw a lot of the sparkly and the, the round shapes like we see right there. Huh. Why? Why can't we go in? 
I'm on to them. I see you, Bristol artists. You're in Glasgow. Here's a nice turtle. Okay, let's learn a little bit more about Glasgow as we walk down this river. So for many years, Glasgow was one of the most densely populated countries in Europe. And what happened is like after World War II, there was more industrialization and more neighborhoods and suburban areas put up. So a lot of people moved from city center to the suburban areas. So while Glasgow it still is only about a little bit over a million people today, um, a lot of people aren't as densely crammed in the city center, but you can imagine just like how densely populated this part of the world must have been. Okay, so we're actually looking for coffee and for breakfast because I'm really hungry. Um, but I found this path to walk down. It's entirely not where we're going, but look at all of the beautiful art. And it just goes all the way down here. This is so weird. Like, look across from us, we have a chair in the woods. Chair in the woods. And then over here, it's just super clean. And there's all of this beautiful artwork. There's that graffiti art again. I really like that. I think it's done by a different person. But one thing about like art up top is you have to figure out how to get up there. Without probably getting caught. Because, I mean, in this area, there's CCTV. This is a construction site over here. So I'm sure that I'm on camera too. Woo! That's impressive. Okay, we've reached another one of our art pieces. Maybe we can see it together. This is really pretty. Right? Randomly out in the middle of this very quiet street next to the old ship bank established in 1849 next to all of these doggies. They're very doggy like and wet. Like me. Okay, let's keep exploring. Maybe we'll find coffee. Oh, this street looks like we're in Edinburgh and I'm down here. Look at all of these beautiful little houses. On top of each one, there's like a different icon. Oh, nice. Yummy. Look at this. This looks like London style almost. We're walking in the road because I'm trying to get this one. Okay, that was our tiny detour. We're not gonna go on that street because it's not going to the direction I want to show you. We are approaching, I think it's called the Market Pass. The Merchant Pass? Something like that. So, back in the day, like a long time ago, there was a big donkey. You'll see the donkey in a bit. And on there stood like the intersection of the two high streets. So you knew that if you ever saw this super high thingy standing in the middle of the road, you were gonna be approaching all of the high streets. So that tower, the pointy, that is where all of the merchant stuff used to be. Many, many. Many years ago. We've now entered a new beautiful part of town. And well, I didn't find... Whoa, look at my face. Well, I didn't find a cafe. I found the grocery store. So, we'll be drinking the grocery store coffee. 
and just looking at these really old buildings that have been around here for quite a long time. Oh, there's these beautiful yellow birds. I wonder if GoPro will pick it up. Beautiful yellow bird. Hi. He's standing on the post. Okay, let's continue to walk down here. Oh, oh, we have something on the floor. Okay, Hunter Street, Thursday, 24 November, 1904. At the North British Railway, an explosion occurred resulting in the death and injuries of Fireman William Ray of Glasgow Fire Brigade. Okay, so one thing that you should know about Glasgow is if you Google it, one of like the top 10 things that appear are random bad things that have happened here. So I guess that's one of the maybe random or not so random that has happened here. So let's go explore this very beautiful wall in front of us. So we have reached one of the staples in Glasgow, and it's brewery. We can test the alphabet and make sure there's a T. We can see the whole brewery. And maybe we should go see what's inside. Because if there's a graffiti about beer mats, then maybe there's more history and science about the art behind beer brewing. We have better than beer mat lore. We have beer can lore. So Tenants was one of the first breweries to experiment with a flat top can and then also with a can instead of a bottle because it reduced shipping costs. So you can see one of the first cans here. And then after that, they're like, okay, there's a bunch of people selling beer. How can we make our beer sell the most? So what they ended up doing is called the Housewife series where they stuck ladies on the cans. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I love how every, every brewery has its own little niche. We have the Pelican for dinners. We have ladies of the cans for pennants. I found beer stickers. Look at this one. An ideal tonic, nourishing, whoa. An ideal tonic, nourishing and invigorating. Got there. Biggest socialite gathering in Glasgow is right here on the necropolis. Let's go check it out. I hope you can hear that. The birds are so happy. I found another graveyard. Look at this one. So this was erected for the Merchant House of Glasgow. And I don't understand why it's all empty on the inside, but it is. It looks kind of like Socrates' prison. See why this is erected like the prison that Socrates stood in? Oh, I see a salmon. Salmon stone. This person probably worked for the city if there's a salmon stone on it. Usually when I go explore graveyards, it's just me, which is fine. But I think that if you put millions of dollars into a gravestone like this, you want to be remembered. James Davidson, born 1772. Guys, this place has been around for like 300 years, over 300 years. Wow. I mean, it looks like the bottom has been opened up. So there's probably like some people chilling out in the bottom and the, the walls. This is surreal. This is a really, really old and amazing graveyard. William Matthewson, merchant in Glasgow, who died December 12, 1846. And his wife, 
who died 1831 at age 37, and their kids who died before them. So likely there was some sort of a plague that happened. Happened? Yeah. Happened to take a bunch of the merchant and his family. Um, one thing to note is that there was, whenever plagues happened here, because the city was so densely populated, they spread super fast and they were super, super deadly. So I'm sure throughout the graveyard, we're gonna see a whole lot of that. These are so real though. So the merchants then were, oh, we have to come over here. The merchants back in the 1800s were basically the Elon Musk, the Mark Zuckerberg, those people of today. Now this is what we're looking at. It's like the top of a gravestone or something. So I'm not entirely sure who's buried in here. It's beautifully kept. Which means that like the last gravestone that I saw on the inside, they were buried in the late 1990s. So the graveyard is still being kept up, um, likely either by the family or by someone else. The family though started to be buried there in the early 1800s. So it's this huge family graveyard of people, like probably just prominent people in Glasgow. That's a little double pillar thingy. In the background, we see Glasgow Cathedral, the little spires getting a little glow up. So there was something with this dude where people really liked him. William McGavin, another merchant, but then author of The Protestant. I don't know what the Protestant is. Do you? So a bunch of the graveyards in here were from the, like the Victorian elite, you know, the merchants, the builders, the funders, and like all of the industrial stuff that built Glasgow into this thriving engineering city. And then just a hundred years, basically, after the Victorian years ended, you know, all of that engineering and infrastructure and manufacturing that they had built was moved overseas. And Glasgow had lost that to provide for Europe. To so find it really interesting that what we once admired and what once made people rich and wealthy isn't always what, you know, what's gonna last in the future. Just look at these, like all of these people, the biggest shop owners, the biggest buyers, the builders of Glasgow. We're all here taking a nap together. I was gonna show you something, but then I found something else. There's a sign, a prison named after a duke. There was a prison here one time. Who knew? right next to the church. So if you escape the prison, you can go pray. Now, we are approaching a photo of Mr. St. Mundo. Look at that. Look at Mr. Mundo with his cute little toque and his cute little birdie. Okay, okay, Glasgow. I understand. I too would want to build a church for that guy. I mean, who doesn't want a church built for a dude wearing a cute toque and holding birds. I'll take it any day. Okay, so this very nondescript building, like, you know, it's been redone. Today, it looks like it's a grocery store for goods from East Asia. Back in the day, this used to be a dance hall. So basically what happened is like, people started to dance and this one dude was like, you know what? Paris has the best dancers, let's go learn down there. So he sent a bunch of people down to Paris. And then in the 1800s, one of the Victorian preachers was like, uh-uh, not having it, this is the devil's dance. And he shut down the nightclub. Like, how silly is that? Dude, dancing is fun, says every psychologist ever. Whoa. This one is very cool too. Art. All of these people are looking at me and not at the beautiful artwork. Okay, 
Remember how I told you the Victorians were super into merchant stuff? So this was like an old merchant building. Look at it. So you can see this little image on the side and just imagine how awesome that would have been. We're definitely going to walk around because it's up here though. And then up here on the roof, like the merchant probably had his house up there and then just chilled on the patio, the little terrace up there. And down here is likely where all of the goods and stuff that he would have sold, like would have been sold out of. So do you, you would pull your horse up here, bloop, 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 bloop. maybe tie him around here. Check out that door. I mean, okay, let's look at this. Beautiful, beautiful building. That dude is trying to escape from, wait, where is he? That dude is trying to escape from working. And then we come down and we see the door panel. And we have two doors. Oh, look at all these little dudes up here. Come on, zoom on. So all of these little dudes are just chilling out, looking down. So on the very top, there's something I can't see that you can't. This is 1825. This structure has been around for almost 200 years. Oh! Is this a thistle flower? Is it? I finally found it. I have searched far and long in Scotland for the alleged, the lore, the thistle flower. And we found it. Finally! Now the reason I'm searching for this is because there's epic lore in the thistle flower, but let's take a look at it. They're not blooming yet, but you can see where these little things will be purple and pretty, and for now they're just all hanging out here. Now the reason the thistle is one of the coolest things I think about Scotland is that A, it was one of the first national flowers ever in the world to become a national flower. Now the thistle was actually used by the Scottish people whenever they were fighting the Vikings. See, they would throw the thistles on the floor, and then whenever the Vikings stepped on it, they would be like, ow, ow. And that's how the Scottish people would know where they're at. Just look at how pretty, look at all these thistle flowers. I'm so happy. We finally found them. <laughs> finally, just in this random street by a merchant house of all places. So the other reason I think it's really cool that this thistle flower is Scotland's flower is that Caledonia is an old Roman word that means people with hardened feet. So even whenever the Romans were here, they knew that the Scottish people had resilient feet, probably to thistles. Yay, my Scottish adventure is complete. I feel so accomplished. Now I can go have lunch. Maybe he'll start again. This art has music to go with it. And, hey, it looks like Glasgow's wake, waking up, woken up, awaken, awaken Glasgow. Let's appreciate this art. Check that out. Yay. I'm gonna make the sound so you can hear it. Look at this beautiful wall. Now it looks like it's all done by the same artist. And it's exceptional. Like there's some brushwork, there's some spray work. There's a lot of different techniques in here. And I like how we have the different seasons. So first we start in autumn and then now we're moving more into winter here. And then as we walk this way, we have a tiny little cow. We're going more into spring where you can see like a lot of the flowers that we've been seeing. I haven't seen this animal yet. I've seen lots of tiny little cow. And then we move into summer and check out how they've aged this building. I kind of think that's interesting. Whereas the more we've gone on, the more 
of the uh, the fake, the fake aging that they've done. I see a unicorn on art. It's pretty great. Unicorn. Unicorn on art wall. It's a pretty great piece of artwork. I really want to go into that building. If you are skilled in entering buildings that have cool things to go see, let me know. Because I feel like there's some stories from there that need to be told and I can tell those stories. So as we walk by this beautiful wall, enjoy the bagpipes. Okay, I'm trying to go somewhere and I seem to be going in a circle. So let's just appreciate this. Because while I can't get to places when I want to, I can always find artwork. So while Mr. St. Andrews is the patron saint of Scotland, that kind of was decided for us many hundreds of years ago. I have to show you now what's in front of us. Because the real patron saint of Scotland always has a cone and supports the winning team. He's ready for rain, you guys. If that frame just didn't capture Glasgow, I don't know what does. <laughs> The Duke of Wellington never gets wet.